Hello friends and welcome back. Uh, a couple housekeeping notes very briefly. Number one, uh, because of this COVID and, uh, and I'm not at my residence, I'm recording these in 720 by 480 to conserve bandwidth. So these would probably be uh, better viewed on a smartphone or a tablet. You're probably going to have a better experience versus trying to view them on a laptop or desktop or a television set. Okay, secondly, I've made some adjustments here to the light, and I hope this is a little more pleasant for you. I hope we can really cut down on this glare so you can have a better viewing experience. Okay, so without, fur without further ado, let's get started with the magazine. Today we have the February 2020 issue of Marie Claire with Elle Fanning on the cover. So let's get started with the images. Okay, this one. This one is a, this is a new advertiser. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's always been best to cut a little slack to, to a new advertiser. But, you know, it's, it's actually quite nice. But the only thing is the color temperature here. They've pulled the color temperature way too far into the gold. And this reminds me of Dior. There is a fragrance from, I believe it's Dior. And it's, and it, and it, it's been running for quite a few years. And it's about the same color temperature as that perfume from the ore. But anyways, it's it's far too pulled into the golden yellow. This would be a much better photograph at 5500 daylight, 5500 Kelvin. So here we have a, just a tremendous uh, photography and modeling from, from gas. It's, I've said it a million times now, and you're probably tired of hearing it, but gas absolutely sets the standard for models in the industry and what's cool is let me share this with you real quick there were two deaths in about 05 06 two models died of cardiac arrest that were related to uh, anorexia okay and there was a big big deal there was a big push in the industry and somewhere between 06 and 08 as a result of those two models dying they came up with this new body mass index that they were going to freeze out. They were going to ban any model who had a body mass index of less than 18. Okay. So, but we're still, we're still on the thin end of things when it comes to modeling. And that was 12 years ago. Now, guess, guess you can tell this woman is very healthy. I think this is Gwen Van Mare. I'm, I'm not positive if this is her or not. But anyway, my point is, Gas uses healthy models. Look at her, her physique, her shape. The, every month to month, Gas uses the best. But my point is, after 12 years in Gas leading the way, Dolce and Gabbana have started using some models that are very curvy and, and uh, voluptuous. And now also Chloe. So Gas has, has basically always done it. And now we have Dolce & Gabbana and Chloe. So it seems it's very early, but the trend is we're moving to models that are very healthy and attractive. And we're po I think it's very hopeful we can be getting be, uh, getting away from this nepotism in the industry where these very unattractive girls who are the daughters and nieces of hedge fund managers, they're getting these modeling gigs and they're not up to the job. So I hope this is a trend that stays with us. But anyways, we talked before about Gallery Worthy and Hall of Fame. This image to the left is absolutely a Hall of Fame image. I mean, it's just incredible. That is an incredible photo. And it reminds me, if you remember, this is an homage. Uh, April 1999, Rolling Stone. If you remember the photo, and it really kind of veered. It's funny. It veered off into quasi-pedophilia. Is Britney Spears, and do you remember she was wearing pink and white, and she had a little girl's bicycle, and her shorts on her butt, it read baby, right, and it was really, and I don't know her age at the time, but she might have, Britney might have been a minor, so we were really kind of delving into some, you know, Calvin Klein type of pedophilia. Here, now this model is clearly of age, but what I'm talking about the photo is an homage to the April 1999 Rolling Stone photo of Britney Spears and that pink and white bicycle. So, a tremendous job. If again, I said this before, if the 
if the fashion magazines had a yearly award show like the Tonys and the Oscars and the Grammys, right, this would absolutely, without question, be up for the best photograph of the year. If if this industry had an award show, it's that good. Okay, moving on. We've seen this before. Grossly overprocessed. The image is completely ruined. Here, this, I think there's some heavy posts going on, or some maybe there's some lens baby here, because this does not appear natural if a photographer is using a somewhat shallow depth of field. Right? This zone of focus, this zone of focus just isn't working. The, the math of this zone of focus is just wrong. And it's leading me to believe either this was shot with a lens baby, or this is this blur, selective focus, it's being done in post. And I don't like this. Let's please, let's stick with old-fashioned photography and let your zone of focus or your depth of field, let that be determined by your aperture. Just control that with aperture and leave all that craziness to, to, to others. But when you get into these national magazines, I would hope they're, they're not engaging in this. Just use aperture. Okay, take, okay just a glance. I wanted you to glance at that. Quick glance. What if, what did that look like to you? Now, we talked about a set designer or a fashion editor. Now, doesn't this look like, at a quick glance, that looks like her belly? Because this is almost like a, a flesh color. It looks like Lauren Hutton has gained an incredible amount of weight, or they have her in a fat suit. And it looks like they've pulled her sweat top. This almost looks like a sweat top. They've pulled it up and exposed her belly. And she's got her arm across her belly, and it's like she's gained a lot of weight, right? So can you imagine? You know, I looked at this image quite a few times, and it boom, it, it looks like her gut is hanging out, right? And it also it is, she's sitting in a chair, right? And she's got the back of the chair forward. And I'm thinking, you, you talk about faux pas. The photographer who shot this should be exiled to an island for a period no less than five years for this criminal photograph. Okay, this is criminal. Okay, I can understand putting her in a chair and turning the chair backward, but a flesh-colored chair that looks like she's got her gut hanging out? You've got to be kidding me. So again, this is, this seriously, this is criminal. This is absolutely criminal in fashion photography. And if I were Lauren Hutton, I would be P.O.'d that I was shot like that. This is cool, very nice. When I saw this, it almost, it right, it had a, a very slight Vivian Meyer quality to it. As soon as I saw this image, right now, Vivian Meyer shot in black and white, she shot with a Roly Flex, which is six by six, or the aspect ratio would be one to one, right? But the feel, this kind of feel, now it's not black and white and it's not one to one, but it really has this kind of Vivian Meyer quality to it and I think it's really a beautiful photograph okay we see the return of the bangs you'll see this more and more this is a trend and it's working this is very popular now you see more and more models and we'll see that in future issues here because I've got a whole bunch in the queue right a whole bunch backlogged and this has definitely made a comeback but again in order to pull this off it requires a youthful model and here she is she's youthful Definitely pulling off this look. Okay, we're getting back to this pith helmet. Getting back to colonialism. And no less, they have a woman in color wearing a pith helmet indicative of colonialism. So, you have two faux pas at once. Not only is it colonialism, you have a woman of color wearing a symbol of oppression toward people of color. So, wow, that was just all kinds of wrong. Okay, this here is the same thing again. We're getting back to this lens baby type thing. Selective focus. This is not done in camera. Okay, so here's why. If you look at this image, this left hand is in focus, the right hand is in focus, but only this side of the face is in focus. The right side, her right, camera left, is out of focus. So how could it be, if you're talking about depth of field, no matter what aperture choice, how could it be that one side of the face is in focus, but not the other side. 
it's not, I, I shouldn't say it's impossible. I mean, nothing is really impossible. It could be a, a fluke in a million, but I doubt it. So my point is, the, who, whoever did this, whether it's in post or whatever, they missed that. They have one side of the face in focus and the other side of the face out of focus. And how can that be when you're, when you're dealing in depth of field? Okay, It's not making sense. That's why they should just, I, as I've said a million times, self-awareness and restraint are the two best friends, two best traits of a Photoshop technician. Okay, Self-awareness and restraint. This Photoshop technician is lacking. Okay, here... This was shot with an incredibly, uh, like a, a harsh light, and it doesn't work. This would have been a much better image had it been shot with a soft modifier, like a soft box. Okay, because this, this light, this bounce, the specular highlights, it's way too harsh. Okay, and what happens is you lose the detail in the fabric. When you hit white with a harsh light, it just, right, you get the specular highlight. And you lose all the detail in the fabric. So, if you're going, just rem I, I would just, you know, very respectfully remind you of that. Is use a soft light and ignore your histogram because one thing about shooting white, you know, ask any wedding photographer. Your histogram will fool you. The histogram will spike up on the right, showing you have way too much white in the photograph. But that's exactly. It's the case. I mean, you're shooting a bride or you're shooting a woman in white. Of course your histogram is going to spike on the right side. So what it sometimes happens is people think, photographers think you need a balanced histogram. So it's low. It comes up in the mids. It spikes. It crests down. It comes downward. and then Right? So you have like a bell curve. A lot of photographers think you have to have a bell curve in your histogram. And you don't. Especially... When you again, I'm repeating myself. If you photograph white, it's going to spike up, and don't try to tweak the camera. You're fine. Okay. Okay. Here. Oh, this is classic. Now this should bring back a memory. Okay. The the this is an homage to a certain photographer, and this is an absolutely brilliant homage. Okay. There, but there's one thing missing in the photograph. That's the telltale of this photographer that I'm thinking of, okay? But just right, I mean, this is, sh a photographer should come to mind immediately, okay? And it's Elliot Erwitt. Elliot Erwitt always loved to photograph like a little dog. It'll be like a little lap dog, right? And then you have the sense of height in, in the legs, right? So it would be, it's like point counterpoint, these tall legs and then a little tiny dog, but right, this is an Elliot Erwitt photo. It's just that the dog is missing. But that is 100% an Elliot Erwitt photo. And it's really quite a clever tip of the hat to Elliot Erwitt. Okay, this is a good, I think this is Orchid. I have this color, right? I have about 10 Savage Papers. And this is in my... This is one of them, Orchid. It looks really great. If you're trying to f uh, photograph a female, of course, you don't want to photograph a man against this paper because it's effeminate, but it's great for shooting women. And again, I think this is Orchid. This is what I said before. Blue does not work, and it's really not working here. This blue, and this is another thing. This, this photographer, this lighting is wrong. It's a really flat... It's a really flat, unattractive light. Okay, the, a strobe, a strobe should be, even if it's a big soft box. Okay, there should be some pop. It should, it should make a photograph pop and come to life. Now this almost looks like. Can you imagine, like a big garage, like a service garage, and over here, camera right, there's a bay door open, like maybe way in the distance. I'm talking at least 20 feet. Imagine a big roll-up garage door with service bays. And that's what it kind of looks like here. It, it looks like about 20 or 30 feet out of frame. They've opened up one or more, like these big roll-up garage doors, and let ambient light stream in from this direction. And they photographed her in ambient, right? Because there's the telltale. This definitely looks like ambient because there's no pop. Now, I'm sure a strobe was used. I'm sure they didn't really shoot this in some type of a big service garage but where's the pop okay the pop is missing 
right? And this is, it's, it's bad. It's really a bad photograph. And again, this blue, blue never works in a photo. It's a back, it's a paper. It never works. And this is the same here. You can tell this blue. Okay, it's not working. Okay, now the same photographer is outdoors. Now this is where the glare gets bad when I have a black, black and white photo. But this is a gorgeous photo. And this is a gorgeous photo on the right. So this photographer, this photographer has some challenges shooting indoors. Now, let me just, I'll, 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 and I don't mean to, let's see. Thomas Whiteside, Thomas Whiteside is the photographer. Okay, so these, this image is flat. Where was that other one? Okay, you saw the other one. These images are flat. So Thomas Whiteside's indoor photography. It looks like he has some challenges using strobes, right? Maybe he just he's not experienced using strobes. You get Thomas Whiteside outdoors, right? And it's beautiful photography. So Thomas Whiteside needs to work on his indoor strobe photography. Okay, and this is another thing I was talking about, Gwyneth Paltrow. So if you look at her teeth, these teeth are absolutely beautiful. And here's why. They're natural. And I want you to look at something, please. The two front teeth are larger than the other teeth, and that's natural, okay? And these, I don't, I can't remember what these are called, but the ones with the sharp point, it's, right, it's the third from the left and the third from the right in the mouth. And I don't know what they're called, but they're the same on the bottom, and they come to the, they come to a point. And that's what a natural tooth should do in this, in this position, it's a pointed tooth, and here you have L fanning, and it looks very natural. So you can now they're white teeth, you know they're healthy teeth, but they're not Gwyneth Paltrow's ridiculous veneers. If you look at Gwyneth Paltrow's mouth, it's completely flat all the way across. It almost looks like it's been done in a machine shop. It looks like, right? They put her teeth on a mill, and they've milled her teeth to within one thousandth of an inch all the way across, and it looks. Stupid. Here, completely natural smile. That's why I just, like, Rob, I, I've said this before. Lou Dobbs, Robin Mead from CNN. Uh, there are many, many people who go out and get these veneers, and they have no idea how clown-like they look with those ridiculous veneers. Teeth have to be, there have to be some imperfections in the teeth them to be natural. Okay, this photographer, we've seen this photographer before. <laughs> Noemi, it's not Naomi, but it looks like Naomi, Noemi, Sabo. Okay, we've seen this before. Okay, this is the same thing this person did before. Okay, we've got this, right, this uh, haze coming in here, right? It's almost like we're flaring the lens. The lens is being slightly turned into the sun and you're getting a, almost a lens flare. Now you can't see the actual diaphragm. You can't see the count the blades of the aperture in here, the right, the, the blades of the diaphragm. It's not that flared, but you can tell now this might be done in post. Because if it were natural, you could probably see, right? You could probably see the the, the blades of the of the aperture. Okay, or the lens. You know what I mean? The the lens. Gosh, I'm getting tongue tied. The blades of the diaphragm and the lens is what I'm trying to get at. Okay, but it's and it's pulled way too far into the green and brown. Okay, same here. So this photographer is becoming a one-hit wonder with this same thing month to month, right? We're getting these, right? We're getting these artificial things put in here in Photoshop, these effects, and it's always green and brown. These photographs are pulled way to the green and brown. It's not working. Here, this is shot at Golden Hour. Okay, the one on the right looks like Mackenzie Phillips. If you remember Mackenzie Phillips from One Day at a Time with Bonnie Franklin and Valerie Bertinelli. She kind of looks like that actress some 50 years ago or whatever, 40, 50 years ago. But anyway, she's kind of a lookalike to Mackenzie Phillips. But a shot at Golden Hour. Okay, I can I can deal with that. Right, this, again, we're getting with blur. This, this, the photographer is using a, slutter, a, a shutter that's too slow, instructing the model to move so we can get this tired, tired blur in the image. Okay, this is cool. Now, conceptually, conceptually, this is beautiful. So this photographer really has a creative mind, 
And I'm not denying, I think it's a female name, I'm not denying her that. So you can see this distressed garage, right? Almost looks like a very old 1920s, 1930s garage. The paint is in distress, the wood is in distress. And you have this wonderful shadow work on here, the trees, the shadow from the trees are all over there. Again, it looked kind of like this golden hour. The sun is very low on the horizon, casting these very steep shadows. But again, look how look how the, the the tent. Now this, you know, the color temperature is what it is. It's that golden hour, but the tent has been pulled to the green all throughout this photo shoot. You see what I mean? Now this is not color temperature that's being tweaked. It's tint. This photographer or the Photoshop technician is is playing around with tint and destroying these images. Okay, this tint is all wrong. It's all pulled to the green. Okay, more more tint pulled to the green. Look at this very steep shadow here. So we tell it's golden hour. We know that. Okay. Again, tent. More tent. Okay, and this is an effect, right? This is a right. Look at how the the light. It almost looks like some type of deity, right? It's just kind of conjuring a deity. And the light is reflecting off the hand, you know, because this is around Easter now, and there's some religious, there's some religious undertones running through this. But I'm talking just tint. I'm all I'm talking about is tint. And look at every image. Now this is the only one that hasn't been pulled to the to the. Every image in this shoot has been pulled to the green, except this one. Okay, it hasn't it hasn't been tweaked. And we continue more more tweaking, more pulling to the green. Okay, not working. Right here we have the sun coming off this cartouche. Okay, it's cool, but right, it's just way way too much, way too much. So in here, I just wanted to end it on this one. Ducky thought, and and I, I'm kind of, I don't understand why she doesn't get more work because I really think she has the look. But for some reason she's, in, I would almost like to speak my mind, but I don't want to. Because I know I'll open a can of worms if I really speak my mind and say why I think she's being denied work. And it's wrong because shes I think she's an excellent model. She has a wonderful look. But she's definitely being, she's definitely being, right, exiled from modeling gigs. And it's, it's very dark and it's very sinister why she's being excluded, right? But again, I just don't want to go there because I'd have to, you know what I mean? It's way too sensitive and I'd just be opening all kinds of cans of worms if I went there, okay? But she's, she's just being, the injustice that's being shown to her is just inexcusable. Okay, there we have it. I think it was in February. February 2020, Marie Claire. Thank you for your time. If you enjoy this, I would sincerely appreciate a thumbs up. And again, the reason I didn't make this a two-parter, it was just too thin. The magazine was too thin. No sense. I just wanted to do it all in one shot. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. And uh, see you in the next video.